After they started the season 2-8, and eight, you may have thought the chemistry that gave the Raptors the second best record in the East last year had vanished, but here's why Toronto's back to their winning ways, and stick around to see if I think they can compete with the top contenders in the East. The team that won the NBA title less than two years ago in June 2019 are finding their rhythm in February 2021. Toronto's recently knocked off Milwaukee on the road in back-to-back -back games, beating the Giannis-led Bucks without their six-time All-Star Kyle Lowry by a combined 25 points in the two games. And the Raps followed that up by closing out their grinded out game with the Timberwolves by going on an 11-0 run after trailing by six points in the final minutes. In Minneapolis, Toronto was on the second night of a back-to-back -back and shot a measly 30% from the field in the game, but with their championship winning heart and instincts kicking in, their defense dug down, and the Raptors even their record at 500 after being 1-6 and 2-8 and and at one point. And given they've developed so much since then, the scary part for the rest of the league is that Toronto still has 43 regular season games remaining to build up even more chemistry. But it's not going to be an easy trip down the slope, because no team in the NBA this year has been dealt a worse hand of cards than the Toronto Raptors. The league has daily rapid testing for COVID-19, putting together a 134-page manual outlining health and safety protocols, but the team's home country continues to deny the Raptors and their competitors from crossing the border. Since the Raptors were abandoned by the Canadian federal government, they were forced to move their families and play their home games 1,342 miles from Scotiabank Arena and their homes all the way in Tampa Bay. In the Raptors' 10th game of the season, Pascal Siaka missed his second straight game-winning attempt against the Portland Trailblazers, and up to that point, Toronto had held double-digit leads in all but two games on the year, but still found themselves 2-8. At that time, I posted a video about the problem with the Raps, highlighting Nick Nurse not having the ear of his team and not properly leading the Raps through their challenging circumstances. Coach Nurse gave Chris Boucher his first start of the season, and Nurse has been much more of a positive influence since I uploaded that video. But what's primarily made Toronto a dangerous team again has been the breakout seasons from Steady Freddy, Storm and Norman, and the Slim Duck. Later on, I'll give you an in-depth breakdown on how three players have fueled Toronto's turnaround. Next, we'll look at how Icy P's morphed back into Spicy P, but right quick, this is my first time legitimately promoting this, but go get at dflowhoops to a thousand followers. I'm posting dope highlights over there as well as NBA breaking news, so go follow me over there. You won't regret it. Links in the description. That's at dflowhoops. Now, moving on to Spicy P. <laughs> who in February has improved his three-point efficiency by 22% from January, his points per game by three, and his free throw efficiency by 8% from last month. While Pascal's certainly turned his season around after a slow start, it still remains to be seen if he can be the first option on a team that wins a championship. However, how Siakam went off with one of the best perimeter defenders in the league and Giannis guarding him down the stretch, that's a great sign for Raptor fans. Around the rim, his footwork, balance, and confidence is starting to regain form, and Pascal's looking like the player who averaged 20 points per game in the 2019 NBA Finals. Meanwhile, defensively, Siakam's extremely underrated on this end, as his rotations and energy are looking typically pristine, but what's been most impressive about Siakam in February has been his touch from beyond the arc. Spicy's taking four threes per game and making 42% of them this month. And as a Raptor fan, I'll be rooting for him to keep that up. Toronto lost both of their centers in Serge Ibaka and Marc Gasol to the LA teams. Ibaka went to the Clippers, Gasol went to the Lakers. Thankfully, as the season got its legs under it, the internal growth of three players in particular saved the Raptors' season. Fred Van Vliet, Norman Powell, and Chris Boucher have all averaged career highs in scoring and have developed into the team's most valuable players on both sides of the floor. After he comes off a screen, the undrafted Van Vliet can knock down off-the-dribble three-point shots with ease, whether they're contested or not. That led him to pass DeMar DeRozan for the franchise record in single-game points by dropping a 54-piece against the Orlando Magic. I'll make a separate video on how Toronto's front office has made repeatedly excellent decisions, but signing the slim-duck Chris Boucher in 2018 was one of the best. 
The 28-year-old stretch big provides excellent spacing for Toronto's offense, as Boucher's high-arcing, untouchable release from distance has led him to shoot 43% from three-point range. Chris is currently right behind Carmelo Anthony and is the 10th leading bench scorer in the league. At 6'9", with a 7'4 wingspan, fluent mobility, and a consistent jumper, Boucher's the ideal fit for the modern NBA. Then there's the six-year shooting guard out of UCLA, Norman Powell, who's one of the game's most underrated players and is filled in perfectly for Kyle Lowry whenever he's hurt. For players who are taking at least 12 shots a game since January 8th, Powell ranks sixth in true shooting percentage behind names such as Joel Embiid, Steph Curry, Zion Williamson, Paul George, and Zach Levine. Shockingly, Toronto's 16-2 when Lowry's been out over the last two years, and a lot of that has to do with Norm filling in for K-Low. Powell's attacking the rim with quick twitch speed and athleticism and is knocking down shots from deep at an elite level. Absolutely locked in, Norm's attempting six threes per game and knocking down 44.2% of them. Powell deserves way more than 28 minutes per game for the Raptors and a guaranteed starting spot going forward because his progression over the last three years has been evident. Take a look at how his numbers across the board have leveled up since 2018-19. The man's gotten better and better every year. But do the Raptors have enough depth this year to win a few rounds and potentially compete for a chance at the NBA Finals? They're gonna have to beat teams like the Milwaukee Bucks. They just faced, of course, the Sixers, who they're facing in two straight now. They're going to have to face in a playoff series. You can't forget about the stacked Brooklyn Nets. It's gonna be insanely tough to beat them four out of seven times. But considering I've gone this entire video without talking about one of the most elite perimeter defenders in the league in OG Ananobi, Toronto just might have enough. Offensively, OGs look like a completely new player attacking the rim off the dribble, as his finishing and ball handling look way more polished than they were in past years. There's Terrence Davis II, who hit a game winner last night on the day his domestic assault charges were dropped. TD2 is one of four undrafted players on the Raptors and can potentially be a valued bench scorer. He can create some offense and knock down some shots. Then there's scrappy two-way players like the former Atlanta Hawk DeAndre Bembry and the former Pistons lottery pick Stanley Johnson, who fit right into the Raptors' culture. But having said all of that, Toronto's been lacking one thing, and that's a legit man in the middle who can defend and grab boards. Aaron Baines simply isn't it, and Andre Drummond would be exactly what Toronto needs. I think they should pursue a deal for him, and then they'd have a better shot at competing in the playoffs against the big dogs in the East. Let me know down below if you think Toronto should make a trade for Drummond. Should they trade Kyle Lowry? Let me know all your thoughts, and I'll respond to your comment. This was D-Flow. Keep watching some of my recent uploads. And I'll see you next video.